Styles FM, broadcasting from Portland, Jamaica. to each and every one just want to say a pleasant good morning to all my peeps in radio land want to big up places like Moortown, Barrydale, Fellowship, Ginger House, Millbank and all the places up in the valley that I know listen to me on a Sunday morning also want to big up all my peeps in Port Antonio, Portland persons in Drapers, Fairy Hill Going out on the eastern side of Portland, want to big you up all. Also want to big up my peeps in St. Thomas, Jamaica. Want to big up peeps in St. Anne, St. Mary. Want to big up persons in Bagwalk, Jamaica and St. Catherine. All of my peeps this morning, a pleasant good morning and the richest blessing of God on your life. And as we worship this morning, he is King. He is Lord. He is God. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. In spite of all the circumstances, we want to pause and we want to say, Lord, you are worthy. In spite of all that is going on, this is monetary. I give my worship to you. this protocol that we worship the king it doesn't matter what is going on around us he deserves our worship hallelujah 
Hallelujah. There's a song that we sing in our church in New York, Perfecting Faith Church. It's about an every Sunday song. Listen, I don't need you to get tired now. I need those of you that are going to help us stand up and give God glory. We praise God. He has a name that's above every name. Yeah. So the song just simply says this. It says, I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Somebody say that. I just want to say a pleasant good morning to Stacy from Decoy in Western St. Mary. Stacy, I pray God's richest blessing on your life this morning. And all of that which is um, confronting you today, we just pray your strength this morning. And what Stacy is saying. Um, he said, please pray for me and my family that we may find peace. In the Lord, Stacy from the Coy in Western St. Mary. Father, this morning we thank you for family. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are the lifter up of our head, Almighty God. And so when we put our trust in you, Almighty God, you cause it to happen. It is by your grace, it is by your mercy, Father, ourselves. We can do nothing, Almighty God. And so, Father, we make efforts then, Almighty God, to seek your face. Whatever it's the shortcoming, Almighty God, whatever our problem is, Father God, we understand that we cannot fix them up ourselves. And so, Almighty God, we seek your grace as we humble ourselves before you. We seek your face this morning and this wise of our family. We seek your face this morning on the matter of Stacey and her family, Almighty God. And we ask, Almighty God, that you'll do for them what they cannot do for themselves. We ask this morning, Almighty God, that as they, Almighty God, send this text in as a contact of their faith, Almighty God, what they are saying, Almighty God, that they need your, you, you to intervene in their family matters. And so right now I pray for Stacy and her family. I pray, Almighty God, that you will fix the issue, fix the problem, bring peace. I pray the peace of God into their family right now in the name of the lord jesus christ and father i put them into your hands and i give you thanks in jesus name
Wedding receptions, barbecues, conferences, and small stage shows. Crystal clear sound, native audio. Our prices are the best. Call us at 871-5212. That's 871-5212. Native audio. We make your events audible. 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 With Styles FM on the go, you can listen to your favorite programs by calling the USA number 213-992-4360. If you're in the UK, it's 020-3670-1330.
Jamaica. You are invited to the first annual Lighting My World Conference to be held at the Hotel Timbambo in Puerto Antonio, Portland on the 20th of November. It will be a day of healing and deliverance with your host, Minister Victoria Miller. Yes, the little lady with the big voice on Styles FM. Call 583-4479 to make your reservation. Come and be blessed. You're tuned into Light in My World. You're listening to Victoria this morning. Just want to say good morning to all my internet listeners. To big up my Kim family also in Jamaica and Canada. Truth is I'm tired Options of you I'm trying to pray But where are you? I'm all church down Hurt and abused I can't Truth is I'm weak No strength to fight No tears to cry Even if I tried But still my soul Refuses to die mm -hmm. One touch will change Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart's torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me there alone To gaze upon your glory And sing to you Just want to say a pleasant good morning to Lady Valerie. Pick up yourself, sweetheart. God riches blessings on your life. Also wanna big up Angie and Humble and all of you wonderful fans. Big up on yourself. much to bring my heart's torn to pieces it's my offering
Big Up Meme this morning and we send the word to Mr. Hunter or in Guantanamo Bay this morning. We speak healing and deliverance to him. Whatever it is that is happening right now, Lord, we thank you for healing. person said good morning I'm having I'm asking you to pray for my daughter she's overseas and having some problem and I am so worried father we thank you that you are not surprised by the circumstances that face us we thank you almighty God that you sees and you knows and nothing takes you by surprise and so for this we give you the glory and the honor and the praise god just because of who you are this morning we love on you this morning father because we know that you are our father and so on behalf of this lady with her daughter father god she said her daughter is overseas and having problem father god whereby she's worried father we pray almighty god that whatever the circumstances are this morning that is going on in that daughter's life father god we release you to that situation this morning holy spirit and we ask that you will correct and bring forth solution to all that is going on in their lives in jesus name This person said, Good morning, my sister. I'm enjoying your service. Have a blessed day from Patrick in Guantanamo Bay. Big up yourself, Patrick. You don't know because of who you are. I give you glory because of who just keep it locked like that. We know you're not move the dial an inch. So Father, we worship you this morning because of who you are. You are great. You are mighty. There is indeed none like you. You are almighty God, Father. And so this morning we give you worship. We adore you. We bless you. We lift up your Lordship this morning over our lives. And we want you to know, almighty God, that you are first and foremost. There is no one else like you, Lord. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are beginning, you are end. And so this morning, Father God, we give you praise. 
not because of what you did or what you have done but simply because of who you are you are God you are creator king and surely you deserve my glory you deserve my praise you deserve my worship this morning and so I give it to you not because of the things that you have done not because of how much we can benefit not because of anything almighty god but simply because you are creator we worship you this morning come on everybody sing it together come on because of who you are i give you glory I'm where you are, lift your hands you and just begin to worship. I give you Lord, we came tonight to give you the praise. Because of who you are, we're going to lift our hands. Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, we're going to lift our hands. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Father, we release your Lordship in this studio this morning. We release it over every other power there is. And we cast down every high thing that wants to exalt itself above you. And Father God, we set up your reign in this place. In Jesus' name.
desire tonight is that you would give us a heart of worship. Lord, let our lives have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Lord, give us a heart like David who was known as, as a man after God's own heart stated in Psalms 42 as the deer pants for the water brook. So pants my soul after you, God. I thirst for you, Jesus. I'm running after you. You're watching Open wide, there's no place I can hide. You are my heart's desire. There is everlasting joy. God, never ending peace. I want you I know you are my heart's desire you are greater than the grave wiser than the wise in you Oh 
this one said good morning i want you to pray for the 4h and the 401 categories i don't understand these texts can you make me understand it please send that again i do not understand what 4h and 401 This one said, good morning, please pray for my brother. We have a positive problem. Father, we thank you this morning again that you are the lifter up of our head. You are the one that we look to. You are the great I am, Almighty God. There is nothing that you can't do. And so this morning, Almighty God, we join faith with this person, Almighty God, that is requesting prayer for the brother, Almighty God, who has prostate cancer and father we thank you that you are lord over these things and almighty god we see jesus coming into the earth almighty god and he healed the sick raised the dead and cast out demon there was nothing almighty god that he did not do and father you have commanded us to go forth and do greater works and so this morning we go forth almighty god doing what you have asked almighty god and so right now we speak to prostate in that man and we command it to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for setting him free right now. In Jesus' name. I also want to say good morning to Mr. Archer, Mr. Archer, Archie. I just um, release to you um, the strength of God right now, Mr. Archie. I know what you're going through, but I say to you, stand in faith believing, because if you believe that God is able, it is your faith that will make you whole. And so, Father, right now I release strength, I release healing, I release peace from every discomfort that he's feeling in his body right now father god and i thank you that you are the god that healeth all diseases almighty god you are king you are supreme over the earth, whole earth and father god here is mr archie i lift him up to you this morning again god almighty god we thank you for loving him we thank you almighty god that you so love the world that you did not stop to think that what you can do almighty god but you did not spare Jesus. You sent him from your side to come and die. And so this morning, because you sent him to die, Father God, we know that Almighty God, you want to touch his infirmities this morning. And so we thank you, Almighty God, for touching him right now. We speak to the body of Archie this morning, Father God, and we command the sickness to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we command that body to line up in the protocol in the order that the king himself make it to, to to function in the earth realm and we thank you for healing and restoration coming to him lord and father we pray almighty god that he will testify of this in jesus name and said I good morning to you on all the styles good morning to you at the styles I'm asking you to pray for me and my two kids thank you keep up the good work may the good Lord bless 
to be chosen Jenny for from such Bali. a time as this. Janice, the Lord blesses you too. And when we, we, we get prayer requests, most of the time we ask, what is it that you would like to pray about? Because the good Lord in his word says you must make your request known unto him. And he will do what he needs to do this morning. And so we ask that you will make your request known this morning. FM on the go, you can listen to your favorite programs by calling the USA number 213-992-4360. If you're in the UK, it's 020-3670-1330. Do you have or are you seeking a place to rent, seeking employment or have a job vacancy? Are you selling a car or having a garage sale? Then come see us. Let Styles do the advertising for you and you'll be on your way in no time. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Advertising Style. Advertise with Styles. Jamaica, you are invited to the first annual Light in My World conference to be held at the Hotel Timbambo in Port Antonio, Portland on the 20th of November. It will be a day of healing and deliverance with your host, Minister Victoria Miller. Yes, the little lady with the big voice on Styles FM. Call 583-4479 to make your reservation. Come and be blessed. You're tuned into Light in My World. Remember, you're listening to Victoria. Those of you who want to reach us locally, the number to do so is 453-1444. Again, 453-1444. This one says, Victoria, please pray for me in my times of troubles. Everywhere I turn, please pray for my breakthrough. So right now we pray, Almighty God, that you'll have mercy. We thank you for your will being done in this person's life. In this person's life. 
We thank you, Lord and Father, that you are God. So will you please come and set us free? So with that, God, we give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are not short in helping us. We thank you, Almighty God, that there is nothing too hard that you can't do. And so we are, this person is crying out, Father God. He said, she said, trouble is everywhere. She's surrounded by problems. She's surrounded by trouble, Almighty God. And so right now, we release salvation to that person. We release, we release you, King. We release your order in that life. We release the Holy Spirit and all of who God is this morning to you. To bring order to your life. To bring order. To bring His order and His peace to your life. And Father, we thank you as you constrain. And as you put things into order, Almighty God, I pray her strength. I pray that person's strength right now. That that person will understand that the grace of God is able to sustain and to keep and to give the ability to go on and so father god we understand that problem will come and trouble will come almighty god and it's not a matter of taking away the problem from us but he's given us the strength to overcome the problem where we are victorious and so father we thank you for strength for this person right now for being an overcomer in jesus name one said please pray for the browns family as we are facing so many attacks from the enemy spiritually financially and our strength is fading please pray for my mother who is a thorn in my life also please help us to pray thanks much Father God, we thank you, Almighty God, for your loving kindness, for your mercy, for your will being done in our life in the earth, Almighty God. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are our provider. Whatever we need, Almighty God, you have already made the, these things available. And so right now I come to you on behalf of Mr. Louis, who is in the Kingston Public Hospital, Father God. Father God, you know what he's there for. And so right now we send the word of healing to Mr. Louis in public hospital in Kingston, Almighty God. And just like the centurion man who came to Jesus, 
who ask Almighty God that you send the word to heal that servant. Uh, uh, so it is, God, that we send forth the healing. We send forth the word of healing to Mr. Louis right now where he is in Kingston Public Hospital. And we command that sickness to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, that it is done in Jesus' name. It's a much higher mountain. It wakes me up. Person is also asking for prayer. Daily. Daily. No, the Browns family, Father, and so I lift up the Browns family to you right now. We are their, their, their substance is concerned. They said, Almighty God, they are being attacked on every side. And Father God, we know the enemy don't like us. We know that he ate us with a passion and that he's all out to get us. But this morning, Father God, we want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, Father God. And as this person said, the strength is fading. Sister, I say to you this morning, put on the whole arm of God, which is the word that you might be able to stand the wiles of the enemy. It's not by might nor by power that you fight, but you fight in the word. And so this morning, it is by the grace of God that we overcome. And so right now, Father God, where our strength is weak, you are made strong. And so because you said that we are made strong in our weakness when we are weak, Almighty God, we thank you for your strength in our life this morning. Because she said strength is fading. It, that means her strength, Almighty God. And just because her strength is fading, this is where you now comes in. This is where now you are strong. This is where, Almighty God, you can work on her behalf, Father God. And so we thank you, Almighty God, for the grace that this person needs to be a overcomer. So, Almighty God, help her to rely on your grace and your grace alone for whatever is going on in her life. Help her to surrender at the foot of the cross. Help her to understand that it is true your strength that she's made strong this morning, Father God. And not to lean upon self in Jesus' name. Where we find happiness. Where we find happiness. A place of Sabbath rest. A higher place of Person did not send the entire text, but what I'm seeing is for me to get a job and give my life back to the Lord. I am falling too far from God. And so you are saying that before you can get give your life to God, you have to get a job. The Lord hear your request this morning. But the Lord wants you right where you is. And there is nothing that you can be in that will stop God right now from loving you. Yes, you might be in a one man house. You might be depending on a man to take care of you. But this morning I say to you that that will not stop God from loving you. So right where you are, you can give your life back to the king. You don't need to move out of that situation because he knows where you are this morning. He knows what you are in. You don't have to wait to fix yourself to come to him. This morning if you pray and if you ask and you give yourself back to him, he will take you where you is, where you are this morning and it is him who is going to change your situation. So right now you need to repent. You need to give your life over into the hands of the king because it is in him that you can live and breathe and have your being this morning. And so, Father, I thank you for understanding. I thank you, Almighty God, for wisdom coming to this person, Almighty God. Where is Almighty God? She's saying that she needs to give her life to you, but she needs a job first, Almighty God. Father God, your hands is not short and answering this request, but she needs also to understand that you can do for her what you what she is thinking that you can't do right now and so i command the spirit of condemnation to leave her mind right now in the name of the lord jesus christ and i pray almighty god that you'll start to work in her life allow this person to see father god that you are god 
that you are king and that your love rule it over all there is no place that you can be that this person can be father that your love cannot touch her so father i thank you almighty god for for that job that she so need coming to her in jesus name And this one said, can you send morning to Julie and her sons, AJ and ND and, and Torren and grandson, daughter, Theria, coming to her son, Dennis. May you guys have a blessed day. I love you guys. I got about two or three witnesses in here tonight. Then every now and then you need to have a little talk with Jesus, huh? And I just wonder if this one said, "Good morning, Mrs. Miller. Please, if you can pray for me and my." Did you get it? I ain't gonna talk to y'all up here. I talk to y'all about me. And my relationship is up and down i can't take it no more pray for me i want to give my life to the lord so pray for me that the lord can deliver me thanks sweetheart what you first need to know that your first relationship should be with the lord anyway you see outside of god and christ we cannot do ourselves any good we go about our own business and we take up the we own person them and we fix we thing together and we come and say god bless you but this is it when we seek first the kingdom of god and his rule and his reign our life then what he put in our life will stays whoever he brings to our life will bring god glory and so we don't want to be seeking after other relationship first but we want to seek the king first because so much of our lives and our marriage are messed up because we go about seeking them ourselves so this morning i say to you seek god now seek god now he's the one who can fit your bits your pieces He's the one who, 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 who calls you and who places you into the earth realm and he has your life plan. You might be worrying yourself and stressing yourself over a relationship that he did not even predestinate for you. And so this morning, you need to let go and let God fix your life. You need to understand who God is that is first and is foremost. You don't need to be worrying about something that he did not orchestrate for you. You need to seek his face this morning and let him be the first love in your life. Father, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for grace, peace and mercy coming into this life right now, Father God. And I release the order of God into your life right now to correct every circumstances to correct every situation around you and as you seek after the king this morning i thank god that he will reveal self to you and you will understand that he's your first love seek him in jesus name this one said good morning to you my sis please pray for my sinus problem and arthritis in my shoulder so father god we thank you right now that your word says that jesus christ died that by his stripe we are healed and so almighty god it is for every man save and unsave almighty god your healing is for every man this morning and so father god i release healing i release deliverance to that sinus problem right now in the name of the lord jesus christ i send healing to you 
and I pray this morning that the sinus will go and that arthritis will dry up from the very root. We curse sickness, we curse arthritis, we curse sinus, we command sinus to dry up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we thank you for the healing virtue of Christ that he died for us to have in Jesus' name. This one said, morning, I'm asking you to pray for me that I can get a job to take here. Of my kids. And Father God, we understand that the economy is sick. Everything around the economy and this world system is falling apart, Almighty God. And people don't know what to do. But Father God, we understand also that in your economy, there is no luck. We understand, Almighty God, that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And so with this understanding, we come to you on this, be on this person's behalf, Almighty God. Thanking you, Almighty God, for the provisions that you have available for her, Almighty God. And as she released her faith this morning, Almighty God, we thank you for that employment coming to her, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. I say to you this morning that as you ask for the prayer, as you ask for this, you need to start getting your resume, your recommendation, and all of those things out. And you need to take them into the business places and dropping them off, working with what you believe. And this one says, I know God loves me. Even when I'm angry, he loves me. Sometimes he shows us the way we, sometimes he shows us the way and we turn on the wrong path. He, please continue to pray for me, money. You see, if, if, if God continues to show you the way and keep turning on the wrong path, then you can't blame what got happened to you at the end of the day because look here, he won't keep you out of the wrong path because he understands that something depends on the wrong path where I got harm you. Something depends on the wrong path where I might bring you debt. Something depends on the wrong path where I might destroy you. And that is why he said, look, here is life. Choose life. And yet still we, do, we, do, we, we fail to choose life and we stay on the wrong path. So enough time we stay on the wrong path and blame God. And say, if God are God, how come he make? He don't make nothing happen. He shows you the way. You continue to go on the wrong part. So whatever you meet on the wrong part, it's not God's fault. And this morning he's saying to you again, my sister, choose life. This one said, good morning, Mrs. Victoria. Can you say a big shout? Happy birthday to my big brother, Ochinio. Okay, as I pronounce, Ochinson, aka Mr. Dust in Orange Bay. And this is coming from Sister Kira Hunter. Sister Kira Hunter wants to say happy birthday to you, Mr. Dust. So big up yourself. Happy birthday to, to you too coming from me. May you have a good day. Enjoy your day and God the richest blessing on your life. Also, I want to say good morning to you, Mrs. Hunter. And this one say good morning to Julia and Pabell. Big up yourself. And it said, Ajay, Tira, and Teron, may the Lord be with you.
can we tell him this morning? it the road to glory your sunday morning gospel and inspirational music program on styles 96.1 from 9 a.m until 12 noon tune in styles the people station i'm on the go i'm on the go i'm on the go i'm on the go You've been standing like that beside the radio all day. Haven't you heard about Styles FM On The Go? With Styles FM On The Go, you can listen to your favorite programs by calling the USA number 213-992-4360. If you're in the UK, it's 020-3670-1330. It's that easy? Wow! Styles FM On The Go? I like it! Jamaica, you are invited to the first annual Light in My World conference to be held at the Hotel Timbambo in Port Antonio, Portland on the 20th of November. It will be a day of healing and deliverance with your host, Minister Victoria Miller. Yes, the little lady with the big voice on Styles FM. Call 583-4479 to make your reservation. Call and be blessed.
he's on your side. God is never far from us. He watches over us all. Don't believe what the enemy is saying this morning. He loves you. Don't judge his love by your experience or try to measure his love by what you're going through. He loves you.
for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Oh, until you die. One thing, God. 
has done for you and I want you to just say thank you. Thank you. Just one thing. I want to thank you. He woke you up early this morning and said thank you. This is coming from Sandy in Hope Bay. She said, could you pray for me? Sandy, we need to know what to pray about. Thank you! 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 Keep to myself a high stirring up from the depths of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little giddy or maybe even strange, but praise is the way. This person is saying, I want you to pray for my relationship. It is falling. Pray that it come back to the way it were. Or the way it was. Are you married? This is what I want to know. And I, you need to understand that I can only pray for what is in the will of God. No amount of willing and, and no amount of doing anything will get things from God. 
only what God wants and, and, and what God already put into place will manifest in your life. So if it is a case that you are, you are living in a, um, a lifestyle where, where you are not married or it's, it, it's something else, then you know so I can pray for that happen. Because I can only pray about the will of God for you. Alright? So this morning I pray the will of God in your life on your relationship. If this person is who God created and designed for you, then I pray that whatsoever is stopping, whatsoever is barring, whatsoever is keeping this relationship from coming into the plan and the, uh, and the intent and the will of God, we curse that today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, allow your will to be done in this person's life. Most of all, what I pray, Almighty God, I pray that this person will understand you. I pray that this person will know you, Almighty God. Because, Father God, you wish above all that man prosper and be in good health. But, Father God, you also know that for man to prosper and be in good health, they have to come into your Lordship. They have to acknowledge you as their first love. They have to seek you first. And so today, my prayer is towards this person is salvation. I release salvation over this life and I pray for the order of God to come upon this life in Jesus name. about you Jesus Father we give you praise this morning we give you honor we give you glory it's all about you and your will and your way and your intent so Father God I come before you understanding that you are God you are King you are Lord there is no one else like you and so this morning, Father, I lift up that pregnant mother to you. I pray for her, God, that a child inside of her will not be aborted because of any plan of the enemy, Almighty God. Father, we understand that the enemy is after our children more than anything right now. And so we come against everything that would want this mother to lose that child, Father. We put the blood of Jesus upon that pregnancy right now and we surround her with the blood. And we thank you, Lord God, as you preserve that life, that pregnancy, and that mother. Father, 
we thank you that there will be safe delivery safe delivery it will come to fruition almighty god and that life will live and walk out that god-given purpose in the earth and we thank you lord for this being done in jesus name This morning, I just want to take the time out. It's six minutes after eight o'clock. And what I'm really going to do this morning, I'm just going to encourage persons. Um, I seek the Lord last night about a word, at least from week I've been seeking. Him. And um, all that I'm coming to you with this morning is some word of encouragement. Because we understand that the enemy turn up more than any other time. As we said, the things turn up. I saw the enemy turn up against man. And he is seeking who he may devour. And the point is, if he is seeking who he may devour, then it means that he can devour everybody because he must seek to see who he can pounce man. So I'm here to encourage people this morning. Look around you. Things is a mess. Everything is around you is falling apart. And it look like so the devil are roaring lion. But the Bible says he is like. He's not a roaring lion. He is like. And so, just some word of encouragement this morning to bring to you that you can make it. It doesn't matter what is going on around you. If you trust God and believe him, there is hope in God. And if there is no hope in anybody else or in anything else, if you may, you may be looking to the government. You may have looked to the government. 
You may have looked to your job. You may have looked to your children. You may have looked to your husband. You may have looked to your wife. You may be depending on some people to see you through. But this morning, they, you, you have seen them fail right in front of your eyes. But I'm here to encourage you that God will never fail. And, 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 and we can look back into the, 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 the history of the Bible to see what God has done in some great people life and it's not that these persons wasn't normal human being they were ordinary people but god transformed them god changed their lives because they have said yes father god i will believe you and so we are going to be look on the patriarch of the bible how they make a difference and the statement that they are i have summarized some statement to take to you to say to you this is it if these persons can do it you can do it. So this morning, the first per patriot that we are going to look at is Noah. And what Noah says, I, I, I simply summarize some things about Noah and what he was saying to people. The statement that he came on the scene and he said something and he has left. And it is for us to take these statements and look at what this patriot was saying to us and use them. As encouragement to encourage us that we can live this victorious life. Now, this is what I summarize for Noah. Noah says, one man can make a difference. Noah was very old. And when you look back into the book of Genesis and you see Noah there, Noah, 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 get the word from God. And Noah, Noah, Noah built on the word. Noah, Noah did not just sit down and say, show me all your man. And you know, make no sense me. I want them people there. And then I uh, repent. Noah believed God. And as Noah believed God, the word of God said, Noah won for 100 years. Right? And nobody repented. But yet still, there it is that he was building the boat. And nobody never see rainfall. And nobody never see these things before. But Noah get a word from God. And Noah stand on that word. And Noah believe God. And then we see the rain. And it is Noah's life is saying to us, one person can make a difference. You just need to surrender your will. You might then in your condition, you might then in your situation, you might say, boy, me alone can't do this. It might be a church that you are in and things not right. And you say to fall apart and you're concerned. Because I had these concerns first. When I was in religion, I got kicked out. And my concern was simple that things need, we need to see God moving. Right? And, and Noah was just one person. You might be saying, look here, one somebody can do it. But let me tell you, if you can avail yourself to God, through you, God can make a vast difference. Because look what Noah did. It was him that God speaks to. And he, dis he decided to listen. And those seven persons were, or eight persons were saved to build back the human race. So one person can make a difference when it comes on to God. One person can make a difference for generations to come. That is no statement. One person can make a difference no matter how old they are. So it's not about your age. Trust God. If you hear the voice of God and if he's talking to you, just do what he's asking you because your life can mean something to somebody else. So many of us, we think that we one can do it. And, and sometimes we tend to look in ourselves and say, oh, look much somebody before me try. I will make me think that I can do it. Look here. When it comes on to God, God just wants a vessel. A vessel in his hands can make a big difference in the world. This is sometimes you know see the way. But this is how you know that you are called. This is how you know that you are called by God Almighty Himself. Because this is when you will know that you are called. When your why is greater than you. When your why is greater than you. You don't see how oh, you oh, oh, you have a manifest on something. You don't know how oh, them are gonna happen, but you have a call in your life. And this something them will come in with then look big. They look vast. They look like you never ago see these things come into pass. But I say that's the reason you know that you are called. When you know that you are called, 
When you find your why, you will find your way. So many of us are out there in the world. And we are searching in all different, different locations. We are looking to all different, different people for help. Right? And we don't understand the purpose of our life. And until we find out why we were created, who created us, and why God sent us into the earth realm, when we understand why, when, Uncle, when we understand why, we will find our way. Because our way is in our why. And if you can understand this morning the reason God created you, if you can understand this morning why you were born, then you will start to see things coming into, into shape, into form. But you don't know why you were created yet. Because you are not seeking after your identity. You are seeking after things. You are not seeking to know why the hell did I born into this earth realm. We just... And so many people blame and say, I don't know what God made me feel for punish, so I'm better, I did dead, better, I never born. Look here, you came into the earth realm for a reason. So you find that out, no? And so many of us, we are not taking up into that, you know? We don't care why we did come into the earth, and we live with life, and we do what we want to do, and we never stop to question our true purpose. The Bible said God creates all things for his pleasure, for his good pleasure. So if he create everything for good pleasure, it means he create me and you to feel good pleasure. What is his pleasure? What is his purpose in our life? Because he is the creator. Did you stop to think about that? Before you take up all your days and do for your own thing. And the one who send you on the earth and know, you know, check where he send you for. And you just live your life. Because this is what me want. And this is how me want to live. And you never put yourself on the earth. You were sent by God Almighty. Find out now. Before you fill your life with all of what you want in a life, find out what the king really wants for you. Anytime you find out what the king wants for you, you will see your life start to come in into purpose. You will see your life start to shape. Your life will mean something now. Right? Because you will understand now. So this God sent me on the earth for do. Right? And I'm going to do it. And the more you begin to do it, you will feel more fulfilling. So many people leave earth and when they die, they did not feel fulfilled. And trust me, they do a whole heap of something, but they still not fulfill. Because what? The main thing that they were supposed to do did not get done. We full our life taking care of our, our, our need, what we think we want. And we never stop to think about why God sent us and what he sent us to do. When you don't have a why, you won't have a way. When you find your why, you will find your way. When you find your why also, you will find wings. Wings that will allow you to fly. And so we see with Noah this morning that his purpose was to save the human race. Right? Right? God have a plan, God have an intent, because God knew that there would come a day when man would get wicked. And we see no, God preserve Noah for this day and him put him into the earth where man him come. And God used Noah. And Noah was able to stand because he believed God. Who is it that you are believing this morning? We are going to look at the next patriarch. The one that I jump from, a lot of them, and I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at Rebecca. And the statement that Rebecca gives to earth and gives to mankind is say, give generously to other people. Give generously to other people. While you are in life, don't be stingy. Don't be always looking to pile up things on yourself and just take tech from people. And it's always about you and your and you have some people that are selfish, but you know, they not share. Everything is me, myself, and I. And they never stop to give. Suppose Rebecca now. Here Rebecca have her purpose. And if Rebecca never stop to give generously to others. you think Rebecca would have found her husband Isaac? No. Rebecca was at the well. Right? Rebecca was at the well. And here Isaac sent out his servant to go find 
find him the right wife. And I, 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 Isaac's servant don't know who he might go to. He don't know what she's about. He don't know who this person is going to be. But he make it up in my heart. So the one that give generously to me. That's the one that I will take back for my master. And here is Rebecca, the generous giver. When the, the, the servant come and Rebecca see the man, all that was in the heart of this man, Rebecca say, all right, I will not only give to you and to you to drink. Because the man come at the well and thirsty and want water. But Rebecca say, I will give to your camels. And if you understand how camels drink enough water, you know, say, I will if a trip that Rebecca have to go make. And she did it generously. And I like say Rebecca just a take and we sit we, we think say Rebecca just a offer the man one little drink of water and then done. Knowing how one well they set up in a den days there. The well down there so deep. And it take the bucket if you go down in the sand. You know, say if I more than one camel, because this man had traveled from far for days and he having servant them, he having helper them with him. And on a one camel they have. And camel drink enough water. So holy Patrick Rebecca have to make. But she did it. And because she did this generous giving, her statement says to people today, give generously. Because sometimes you know, you're giving your way there. So let us not be selfish this morning. I said, I'm just giving to you some word of advice. Let us not be selfish about giving to others. Because it is in Rebecca giving. That she came into the true purpose, the will, the intent of what God have in store for her. And Rebecca came into Isaac's life. And Rebecca became the mother of the 12 tribe of Israel. Hallelujah. And that was who God had the covenant with Abraham with. So, Rebecca's statement to all mankind is to say, Give generously to other people don't keep things to yourself now also we're going to look at the patriarch david what david was saying don't let others put limitation on your life don't let others put limitation on your life just because you see yourself not take yourself for the worst you might not in our eye position. You might look like so you're in our family and you are the worst. But I say to you, God not see you as the worst. He has a plan for you. He has ordained your destiny. Stop seeing yourself short. Stop sitting down and being sorry for yourself. Because when God created you, he never created you for sympathy. Rise up this morning, I say to you. Because if David put limitation upon himself, look here. You understand that David was the least of his brother. My God, when King Saul came, you know, and King Saul came to anoint, God sent, no King Saul, God sent um, Jesse. God sent um, the prophet, um, his name was Samuel, to Jesse to anoint a king for Israel. Because Saul was the ruling king at that time. And Saul disobeyed God. And here it is that God had to anoint a new king. And, 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 and to show us that David was the least. When Saul came into the house of Jesse. Who had these sons. Jesse never even bothered to stop to think about David. So when, Saul tell him, when, 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 when Samuel tell Jesse the father of these sons. That he was coming there to anoint one of his sons to be king. Just, um, Jesse never put David in the lineup. And Jesse said, look here. Him not ready. Him is limited to where him is. Because him is just depend on the back of feed sheep. And so it is some, with some of, of, of us this morning. We may not. People might not see we. We not status. We might not have no status. And we might not stand out in our society. We might, we might have to dip on the back burner like David. But that did not stop David from going forward. Because God knows why he creates you. Do not limit yourself. Do not limit yourself. You see, if David, if when Saul and night, if when Samuel and night, those, those boys, and, 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 and he said none of them never fit because the Spirit of God was in Samuel. And as he poured the oil on these boys' head, 
The, the spirit was saying, no, it's not any of these boys. So, 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 all Jesse do a line up all of the top of top son them we have. And left David run her back. Because he not think that David worthy. But he, so Samuel anoint all of these boys. And the spirit of God say, all, um, deny all of them and say, no. This is not. And so now Samuel have to say, you don't have no other son because I know say God said me don't have your nine smaddy. And a smaddy me come for a nine today. But here it is. The spirit of the Lord is saying it's not none of these boys. So there must be another. You see, when, when, when God has your plan, when God has your life marked out, that is why it is good for people to see God in their life, you know. See God. And a watch face. Know what your people are do. Know what your people are say. Because God who is God alone. Him no, him no partial. He no respect of persons. So you might not qualify in some people's eye. You might not up to date. You might not look right. But let me tell you something. God have a plan for your life. And if you can turn your life in his way this morning. He will make everything come true. Saul, I mean Samuel, say to Jesse, you know, have no more son. This is when Jesse have to now call for David. He said, yeah, me have one little one there on a, on, a, on a bush. Around the saw him steer. I'm a bush, man, because you don't go good for, for, for lead the sheep them. But then one you can't go into the king's palace. And they are in the society. And they are in the business. And they are all over because they look like and they have this... But here it is that when, 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 you notice when Saul, when, 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 when Jesse go for David and Je Je David never feel put down, you know. David was a, my God. David was a man that is full of high self-esteem. In spite of the treatment, in spite of how them put him back, that never get David down. Because look here, you need to understand that no matter what people put you, you can stay right there and be victorious. Because it's not about where they put you. It's about what God predestinated for your life. So anywhere you are in this life, you can be triumphant if you put God first. And so David was a man of God. The word of God said David was after God's own heart. And we see Jesse bringing out David and, and Saul anoint him. And Samuel anointing, uh, 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 and the Spirit of the Lord said, this is the one. And look here, no man, sometimes God call you out from out of the crowd. And sometimes he anoint you. And, you, and sometimes he anoint you, and you have to go back. Go keep the sheep them. Sometimes you have to go back to your situation. Sometimes you have to go back to where you did there. And you just go and stay there and trust God. Just go and do what you feel do and trust God. No put no limitation for yourself. No things say because of where you there can't rise higher. Because God is not a respecter of persons. And every life that comes into this world, God have a plan. You just need to turn over your life into the hands of God. Because he knows where he's taking you. He knows what he's doing through you. And you can't get yourself there. But if you give him your life, you will be surprised to know what he can do through you. So David was not limited by where they place him. Because here it is that David came about and David went back to the, the sheep the sheep to keep the sheep and maybe people forget say david get anointed for be king but david still continue to worship god david still continue to praise god david still continue to trust god so when the time come that the philistine start to exalt itself against the children of israelite against the children of israelite and every day this goliath come up and he says there is not a man to fight and he'd attack some nasty thing against the children of israel and the army of god and David hear about it. Hmm. David just uh, me say, purpose will take you into places where nobody no call you. But you were sent on a mission. And because you were sent, you were set up. You were set up by God himself. Because here it is, Jesse just called David the day. And say, come David, run care the food that go give your, your, your brother them in the army. My God, David just happened to go up on the day when Goliath exalted himself. 
And they say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? We are try trample the name of God. We are trying to make the name of God look small. We are Philistine and I have no understanding. Say, I don't go God of God. And there is no other God like him. You see, when people is Destiny. When people is blessed, when people is cut out for righteousness, they don't sit on one side and watch foolishness. They don't sit on in a religion and, po and powder it. They don't stand up in it and make people defy the most high God. So here David come round. The armies of Saul now say nothing, not, not because they feared Goliath. And David was this little lad. And David said, who the man de? I can't talk about me God so. And David never cared for every year. David never cared because David understand who God was. And David trust was in God and in God alone. And here it is that David brother now. One put him down. And I got to tell David, say, come man, carry the food. Come at this, make you come and go back or keep the sheep. And David said, so what you tell me, say, there is no cause for me to stand up and, 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 and defend the name of the Almighty. You know, hear all the boy I talk about God. You know, hear him exalt himself and I belittle the most high God. Is there not a cause? Some people make it look like saying you're not worthy when you come to God. Because, you know, he's not in the, the limelight yet. And because they don't know nothing about where you are go. And they try to put you down and say, you know, nothing. No. Because of where you wear. And I feel them qualification you have to come under. And they act as if, like, say, a them, a them save you. So if you don't talk like them and look like them and go on like them, you can't display God. You can't say nothing about God because you're not saved yet. So I under for them standard, I feel them righteousness you have to come into before you qualify, before you save. But David, David took off every limitation where people put upon him. And David said, is there not a cause? This morning I say to you, David's statement was, don't let others put limitation on your life. No feel sorry for yourself when people have put you down. Get up, stand up, and be the man or the woman that God created to be. Because it is in him that you can live and move and have your being. Esther. Make a statement to creation. What Esther says to the nation and to the people and to the kindred and to us today... God have a place for you. God created you for his glory. He is bringing you out. And he's bringing out the best in you. Finding your purpose is what will take you into your destiny. You see, when you read the story of Esther, you know, Esther Esther, Esther was an orphan child. And we see the enemy set up strategy around Esther to make sure say, Esther not coming to him purpose. And here it is that somebody adopt Esther, Mordecai. And Esther was this little Jewish girl. And Esther was there. And God have Esther to come to the kingdom. It so happened that, that, that when Vashti, the queen, Lift up herself against the king and exalt herself that the king threw him out of the kingdom. And here it was just because, look here, Esther have to come into our, our destiny. So guess what? So something have to happen in your life. So something have to happen around you. Some problem have to come. So stress have to come. But don't worry about it. Because these stress are the test of time that is taking you into destiny. Sometimes some people need to be moved out of the way. Sometimes the test that God brings to your life, don't murmur about them. Do not complain. Because look here, when gold put in a fire, gold melts. And only the true gold will stand the test of that fire. The things that are going on around you, they are not by accident. But it's to prove, it is to prove that everything that God and every person that God would have to come into your life, they are truth. Some person coming into your life and then perform, and then perform, 
And God bring tests against your life. Because guess what? The tests will prove who these persons are. The tests will prove if they are faithful, if they are just, if they are true. So don't worry about the temptation that come your way. Because here it is, Esther came into the kingdom for such a time as this. And, and we see that, 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 that in the story of Esther that this king, this, that, that, that this king comes searching for these girls to carry back into the kingdom. And Esther was selected. I'm sure Mordecai wasn't too pleased when Esther was selected because then just come and take with some girl and carry them in. The king of king and then just going to people's house and demands that he want them daughter and then want them this and then couldn't say nothing about them and just have to make them go on. But here it is that God was setting up Esther to fulfill the plans and the purpose of God. And so God used Esther that little orphan Jewish girl and bring her into the kingdom and she was the one that God selected. Why she was selected? Because God knew that there was coming a time when the Jews was going to be set up by Ammon, the king right on. And if Esther was not in the kingdom as queen, they would have wiped off the Jews. The Jews would have been slaughtered. And what God wanted to do would not be done and so god bring esther to the kingdom for that time and we see what will happen in the story where mordecai plot against the jews but mordecai did not know that esther was a jew because when she came in she did not tell the king that she was a jew she, the king always think that esther was a babylonian princess or somebody from other but is she is the king nobody in the kingdom know that esther was was a jew and so when time came, Esther was the Jew that go in and put in her petition before the king and plea for the life of her people. And they were spear and Mordecai was destroyed with his family. And so today, one person can make a difference. In no matter who you is, Mr. God can transform your situation. He can transform, he can change, and he can bail you up. Just trust him. Finding your purpose is what will take you into your destiny. So find out, stop and find out what God created for me. And stop living your life and worry about, you know, have no job, you know, have no this, you know, have no husband, you know, have no boyfriend, you know, have your relationship. You need to first seek the king. Seek his way. Seek his righteousness, his reign. Because only when you come into his righteousness, his rule, his reign. And that, that, that's when you will find your purpose. Once you find out what you were created for, you will begin to see clearly what you need to do. You are walking in darkness when you don't know why you were created, when you don't know why you were born. You understand so you're talented and you have some gifts and you're not even using them to bring God glory. And I am God give them to you for you bring out your purpose in your life. You're using them in darkness. Because you still not find your way yet. So anytime you find your purpose, you will find out what is your destiny. Let us look on Joseph because time is against us. What is the statement that Joseph sent to the earth? Joseph's statement is saying, don't give up on your dreams. Even though you are discouraged in the beginning. Sometimes you have some dream. Sometimes you get some great prophecy over your life. And the things that will come against you say, No man, I can't. God did prophesy then something. Oh, me not see them come to pass. Why everything will overtake me? This is what I thought would be. This is what I dream of. This is what I understand. Saying to you today, don't give up. Like Joseph. Joseph, brother, throw him in the pit. Then sell him to the, 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 the people to sell him into slavery. Joseph went to Egypt. One man buy him, named Potiphar. And Potiphar, in Avimini house, and everything in a Potiphar house prosper because of Joseph. And here it is that the devil of his send the wife, he started lost off of Joseph. And from there, he went to prison. And it seems like nothing now work right for Joseph. But Joseph had a dream. 
And Joseph did not lift up his voice and rebel against God. Joseph did not curse God. Joseph did not do anything in that matter. Because Joseph understood who God is. And so it is this morning, you know, matter the circumstances that you see around you. Things might not work out according to how you think it would have worked out. Things might not be the doors that you expect to be open and where you did that have faith in and where you did that pray about. You put your trust in it and say, yes, God, I go work you out for you. And at the end, you know, see you open. I say to you this morning, don't give up. If it did not open, it means that, that it wasn't the will of God. Although you have put faith in it, look here. You need to find out the will of God in your life. And put faith in it is the finished work only. Sometimes the things that we put faith in and say them are going to come to pass because we believe God for them. We don't see them at my own way. And we don't see them come to pass. And things come and done. And we say, God, oh, me put faith in that something so much. And we don't see you open. That's not the will of God for your life. That's your will. That's what you want to see. But I say to you this morning, continue to trust God. Don't give up and believe in God. Because he's coming true for you like Joseph. When God finished with Joseph, Joseph have an understanding who him is in him. Because here it is, Joseph understands that he have a gift of discerning. He has a gift of dream, of interpreting dream. And if you notice Joseph keenly, when the baker and the cup bearer come into the prison, they dream dreams that Joseph was able to interpret. But when them are left out of the prison, the one will go back to to his job, will get restored, just like what Joseph tell himself that I'm noticing that Joseph said, "Remember me, remember if you tell the king about me." You know what Joseph was saying? And when they wonder about him, he said, "Why would this king? Why did, would this man remember if you tell the king any about a prisoner?" But Joseph understand that he have one gift. And through the gift, God is going to make room. The, the Bible says your gift shall make room for you. So Joseph knows, say, this man will come from the palace. And can experience the gift. And that is going back to the palace. This man needs to put in a word for him and talk about him. But here it is that, that the man go back into the palace. And the man not say nothing about Joseph because well, nothing never arise for him to talk about Joseph. But God sent him to the prison for a purpose. Because somebody must come in contact with the dreamer. Somebody must experience the interpreter. Because God sent Joseph at Egypt to save life. And here it is that the time come when the king was troubled. The king had a dream. And now the time comes when, when, when nobody in the king's palace can interpret the dream. All the magician, them, and the obia man, and the, the, the psychic, and all of them people there. But claim said they can't read in the future and can't interpret dreams. None of them could interpret this dream. And the king won't kill them because the king will pay them. The king is paying them. For these skills that them, them claim that they have. And all of them false spirit and then divination and then psychic spirit and then familiar spirit could not help them to interpret this dream because it was hidden from them. So it is we see so many people put their trust in these other gods. You need to know so then somebody got their liars so on something then tell them one or two. Then tell like I do not know everything. It's only the true wise God. Of heaven and earth. Who knows all things because he is omnipresent. You need to know how, how familiar spirit. Take information from other familiar spirit. Because although they are spirit. They are not, not omnipresent. They are not there everywhere. Only the true and living God. Knows all things. So here it is. That the time come. When these people could not interpret. Not know. With all of their magic spirit. When they deal with them. Couldn't interpret the dream. And fear decides to say, I'm going to kill them because guess why I'm going to pay them to do this thing. And then take it for a joke. So at that time, the, 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 the cup bearer start to talk up. And I said, No, king, listen to me keenly. Me know one man when I go down to prison there. We interpret for my dream and it come to pass. Call him. Call him out. It was if time did come. Never give up on your dream. Never give up on your dream. Even when things come in your way, if it discourage you, because Joseph did not give up.
And we see that from the prison, he came to the king and the king gave him prime minister. The next man to the king was Joseph. Joseph reigned. And his wisdom was what saved earth from the famine. From destroying all of mankind also. So God have your way set. And Joseph coming at the earth to fulfill that and he fulfill it and in God. I'm saying to you and I today, find out your purpose and fulfill it. You have heard me preach Sunday after Sunday and I've given you multiple encouragement. And yet still you still are worry. Because you're still in the same lifestyle. You're not making no effort for change. Look here, man. I'm saying to you this morning, do something about your life. Things is not getting better in the world. The world is crying out. The system that the devil have orchestrated up in the world today is falling apart. The world system is falling. It is failing. You're still hang up on you and I blame Prime Minister and all of the government. Them and all of them something. I mean, say there's something that devil system. As long as God knows he can't prosper. You need to get God in your life that you will prosper. Because him have your plan. The dream is free, but the journey is not. You will always have to pay the price for your dreams. Joseph, pay a price. You have to pay a price. It's on things where you want. You have to go through some stuff. The dream, you see it freely. And you see, when, 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 when we understand about these things, you know, when Mary get the dream from the angel, and the angel come and say, Hail Mary, you are favored among all women. You got, you, God predestined you to be the Savior, to be the mother of the Savior who are coming to the world. And you know, so the, 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 the dream never announced all the way. Joseph, Jesus said, I got you. In just tell Mary, say, Mary, you are going to have one son, and he's going to be the savior, he's going to be the king, he's going to be the lord. He's going to save him people from their sin. And Mary said, just be it unto me, as you said. But look here, we bet that happen, there is a journey. And I'm saying to you this morning, there is a journey. There is a path that is set before us. And if we think so, we can just come in and live happily galang, then we, 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 we are full with self. We are full with self. Because we know, we, are make, we need to make some effort upon our part. To stay in the, um, the, the walk of Christ. We need to make some effort to really stand up for Jesus. Because not true, you come in. You come in to God and you have a problem with certain things. And you not take no authority over it. You not try to stop. You not try to do nothing to curve yourself. You just live. You not try you're not trying. And I'm saying to you this morning, you came to Jesus and you give Jesus your life and you have a dream, you have a plan, you have a destiny. You know say God have a plan for your life. But here it is that when you come in, you add an addiction with pornography, with maybe drugs, with maybe loss, with maybe alcohol, whatever it is. And you now make no effort to keep yourself away from these things. You are still going into the pathway. Joseph makes no effort. When the woman come after him, he left the shirt in the woman and run. He never turned up and said, he holy and he righteous and he can't deal with it. He said, I will put no trust in the flesh. So before me, go turn up and say, me I confront this thing, you better me run lefty. And so like us today, we need to make some effort. Because there is a journey. There is a journey. There is a journey that you will go through. There is a walk that you have to take. Because do you have the dream and do you have the desire and do you have the gifts? You know, just end up in these things. So you have to make some effort on your part to make sure that you are doing what it takes to keep yourself in God through His grace. And by faith. Hallelujah. So the dream is free, but the journey is not free. You will always have to pay a price for your dream. You will only be as good as the people you have around you. You are at the top. All alone. You are not a leader. 
you are an icon. And some people like to segregate themselves in leadership. And they like to talk about me, myself, my, and I. And enough time you go in a sun church and you hear some people I say, you know, think you know, I come in here, I come mash up this. And, 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 and all they put is, is, is trust in what they can do. And they give nobody else a chance. And even though you have your dream, you need to understand, say, you need the right persons around you. You need the right persons around you. Because you gotta go put some people in your life to take you. We are gonna take you. Right? And this is it. Joseph, brother, them, them couldn't take him there. They could not take him there. So he have what's to go down to Egypt. Because I don't they saw the prime ministership there. I don't they saw the, the kingdom there. I need a kingdom man because he, he, he can dream and interpret. And the kingdom are always want them kind of gift there. You are created for greatness. The kingdom have need of your gift this morning. The kingdom have need of your dreams. So don't stop dreaming. Do not allow anyone to discourage you. When you're going to the top, take somebody with you. Take people with you. Because if you're not taking nobody with you, you're just an icon. You're not going to reach. We can take from Elijah this morning also. Elijah's, Elijah's word to us is, God will never leave you alone. Elijah's success became the scene of his discouragement. You hear what me say? Elijah's success became the scene of his discouragement. But I'm here to tell you that you are not alone when things are happening and falling apart around you. God is with you. And Elijah sum it up and he said, look here, God will never leave you. Because here it is that Elijah killed off all 150 prophets of Baal. That allow him to slow those demonic prophets who lift up themselves to Satan and worship Satan. And he slew them by the brook. And here it is, this one woman now, a threatening Elijah. And Elijah gone on that knock on a gun ball and a runway. So we see Elijah's success became the scene of his discouragement. He was thinking about running away. So you see, as, because Jezebel did the assess on something, Elijah get afraid. And I just start to think, say, him, I got this one woman I got destroyed. But sometimes the things that we assume, they're not good for you. Assumption is not profitable for a Christian. You will be disappointed. Disappointment is the difference. Between expectation and failure. Don't let your disappointment determine how God thinks about you. Do not allow your disappointment to, 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 to let you to think that, look here, God no love me. Because a long time me I got through then something here. And me did I expect this from him and me did I expect that. I mean, did I expect some whole heap of something to happen? But here it is that God now open the door when I did I expect for open. And, 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 and maybe I call me sin yesterday. Or maybe I call me do this. Or maybe, you know, no, yeah, man. Maybe I just no, 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 need it to come. And you start to assume. Don't let your disappointment determine how God thinks about you. God loves you, He cares for you. And God loves for you is not measured by your circumstances. He's with you. One thing me know saying swear that he will never leave you nor forsake you. No, if you can't hold on in spite of disappointment, if you can't hold on in spite of discouragement, in spite of all that is happening around you, can you still trust God? Don't open your mouth and rebel against the king. And if you have been rebelling, and if you have been panting in your mind and cursing God under your breath, because sometimes we do it. How come me I trust God for that something here? And a long time me I trust God for it. And God no make it come to pass. And 
we are disappointed. But God not see it that way there. God see you in the kingdom when we when already predestined. He sees you just like going to Jesus. Disappointment no mean nothing to God. You not take him by surprise. If you can trust God still and hold on in spite of all that is happening around you, I'm telling you, he will bring you through. Don't let your, div your disappointment bring God down to your level. Disappointment mean a negative surprise. And God no surprise and nothing will happen in your life. What disappointment means is a negative surprise. And guess what? If we can't surprise God, it means uh, we can't disappoint him. Can't disappoint who we can't surprise. Right? So don't even think, say, God is disappointed in you either. As everything we are going to do, before you even do it, God know. In no way you are going to do. So because you, 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 you mess up yesterday, and so something happened to you, and, 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 and you, 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 you think so you, let, you, you think so you let down God, no? God is not, God is not disappointed in you. God says so you are going to mess up before you mess up. You know, take him by surprise. He knows. And that is why he makes, he makes the sacrifice of Jesus Christ available for you. Because God knows that you is just mere man. And that is why when he sent Jesus to the cross, it was a sacrifice for the past, the present, and the future. Before you mess up, God see. So don't bring him down to your level. Don't let your disappointment bring God down to your level. And because you give your because you mess up yesterday, you think that God no love you no more. And because you mess up yesterday, you think that God now gonna prosper you and God can't do nothing for you now because you messed up. God sees you're gonna mess up before you messed up. And he still loves you the same. And he has the same plan for you. You need to get up. And you need to say, Father, I thank you. That you are the lifter up of my head. I thank you, Almighty God, that you have my back, even when it is against the wall. I thank you for being my source. Still praise him. Still lift him up. Still understand saying love you in spite of all that you do. When God asks man a question and a feed and a feed for God benefit, God, God, no. God will get you out of your desert. God will get you out of your desert places. With Elijah this morning, I rest my case. That is my few words this morning to you of encouragement. Do not be dismayed this morning. Do not allow the circumstances that come in against you to make you give up on God. No. I know God you're mad with because somebody do you something. Because people hurt you over and over again. No talk about say you left church and you now go back at church. No because circumstances come, you tend to say, Cho, me not bother. God did not hurt you. God not do you nothing. People hurt you. Right? And what you need to do is give God thanks. That is with you. And he's taking you through the earth. He's taking you through the pain. And that he will never leave you nor forget, forget you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. We see people get up and quit church. And say, boy, I'm not bother with God, yeah, man. Because I appear hypocrite that church and I appear wicked. And I can't bother. I say, people kick me out of religion. And I never leave God. The more things happen to me in life, you know, the more I come up against opposition, it's the more I want the word. It's the more I push myself into the word. I find a better place where I hear the word more. I push myself more in a Bible study, more in a fasting, more in a, any place where I can get the undiluted words. When problems arise, 
I want to go to the word because I understand that the word is God. So I want to get into a relationship with him. I want to be in his center. I want to be in a mindset where my mind is trained. I don't want to leave God for a minute. I'm vexed with him. I say, God, you're the sister. It's going to happen. I never stop it. I'm not bad because you're not true. God sees everything. Nothing takes him by surprise. And he sees what you're going through. But will the situation kill you? Or will you up out and go and do your own thing? When you up out of your situation and go do your own thing, let me tell you something, you're in a danger. You are playing with fire. Because all the devil are going to do is set you up and call you out in a danger and kill you and destroy you. So if you're a backslider this morning, I say to you, return. Return. Do not stay mad at God. Because he loves you. And he wants to nurture you. He wants to bring you into the place that he has for you. Come unto him, all you who have labored. He's saying this morning, he will give you rest. Father, I thank you today for every life that woe of sudden, everything that is happening around these people, Almighty God. I pray their strength this morning. I pray for your delivering power. I pray, Almighty God, that people will start to look to you. People will start to understand that their hope is only in you, God. It's not in the persons around them. It's not in the jobs around them. Because jobs are crumbling. People are falling. So much things are shutting down these days. Because some people in some high place. And then tell themselves that they are right as long as then they are so. And we see them fall. But today we look to you, Father, from where our help comes. We look to you, Almighty God, because you are the lifter up of our faith this morning. And we thank you, Father, for your will being done in our life. We thank you for your grace and truth that you have sent Christ into the earth with to give us the stability and the ability to overcome these tasks around us. And so, God, I pray for each and every believer this morning that they will be strengthened. I pray for the unsaved, God, that they will look to you. They will seek first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness. So that their life, they can come into the benefit and the destiny that you have planned for their lives, Father God. Thank you again, Jesus, for this opportunity to let man know that you are real, you are God, you are king, you are awesome, and you are love. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask this morning. Amen. And with that, I just want to say goodbye until Sunday again. I pray the peace right of God and each and every one this morning. That you will know God. You will really know God. Because the world around us is shaking. And I just want to say, God be with you.